is the new Volkswagen ID4 a cockchafer? You can't say that, Matt. Why not? It's rude. No, it's not rude. A cockchafer is a big beetle, and this is like a big beetle. The original Volkswagen Beetle was the car of the people. This will be the new car of the people, but it's an SUV, so it's bigger, hence big beetle. And I wanted a fun analogy for the intro to this video, so I googled big beetle, and the first thing it came back with was cockchafer. Apparently, it's a member of the scarab family and grows up to three centimetres long. And cockchafer means big beetle in Old English, and we're in England. Anyway, I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow, and I'm gonna review a cockchafer. Buying a new car? Then head to Car Wow, and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. Car Wow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's start this video by talking about the price. So at the moment, there is only one version of ID4 you can buy in the UK. It's called the first edition, and that's what this car is. And it starts from £40,800. But look at this, you can save £4,052 with one if you buy through Car Wow. Though I need to explain something to you. That number includes a £3,000 government grant for plug-in vehicles. And you can get that regardless of whether you go through Car Wow or not. So really the actual Car Wow saving is £1,052. I really do hate the way it's included together in our saving figure, but it's just the way our website works with how we take the data in. So apologies for that. Now, in future, you will be able to get other versions of ID4, which will be cheaper, and the savings might change. And to check out the very latest offers, just click on the pop-out banner up there to get a Car Wow. Let's talk about the design of the ID4, because I've got to tell you, I'm not the biggest fan. I actually like the look of the ID3, but the design elements don't seem to work so well on this larger SUV body. It's just a bit blobby and heavy looking. Yeah, they're giving it a roof spoiler to make it seem a bit sporty. You've got a full light bar at the back, and they're doing that thing where you get the model designation in the center rather than to the side, like on all modern cars. But look at the sheer expanse that you've got here, and they've tried to make it look a little bit more interesting by using different materials and shapes, but it is quite a bulbous looking car. Move down the side. This is a first edition model, so it's got quite a lot of kit on it, such as 20 inch alloy wheels as standard, silver roof bar, silver bits here, and contrasting black roof. You won't get that on the entry level models when they come out. Now from the side, this car, it just looks so much like a Peugeot 5008, doesn't it? Can you see that? But when you move around the front, it's not as good looking as the Peugeot. It's got quite a big, heavy set look to it and quite a high bonnet, which is unusual because there's no engine under there. I do like the fact that they've done this thing with the daytime running lights, the way they run into this strip that goes all the way over to the other one. That's quite nice, but once again, at the front, it's quite a deep looking front end. There's no grill, of course, because there's no engine, just some vents there to cool the battery bits and pieces. <laughs> These vents are real, so there's no fake around the car. Let's check it out inside, see if it's a bit better. Once again, it's very much like the ID3 in here as well. I do quite like the design. It's interesting. It's very minimalist. It feels modern. I do like the cream steering wheel as well, even though it's going to get dirty, but you can soon clean that. It brightens up the cabin. So does this brown trim and the velour on the seats you get for these first edition models. I like it. I also like the fact there's not many buttons. From an aesthetic point of view, from a user point of view, not so much. You see, you have to control things just basically using the central touch screen and these slider buttons here. So if I want to use the heater, I can slide that like that. I can do that, slide it up and down and increase the temperature. If I want to do the heated seat, I can double tap it. But when you're driving, it's just a bit too hard to actually accurately hit those sliders. Now, if I want to change the fan speed, I do have to press this button to bring up the climate control, and then go into the climate control, and then fanny around with the fan. And also the volume control is a slider there as well, which I don't like, I'd rather have a dial. Now you can just use the buttons on the steering wheel because they control loads of stuff, but they're very weird to use because they're sort of touch sensitive and have like a haptic feedback to them. So they like vibrate when you press them, like your mobile phone, but it's all a bit confusing as to whether you press them in and they vibrate or whether you just slide. And it's just not great. The normal buttons that you have on the steering wheel in the old Golf was just easier to use. Now you've got this digital driver's display, which I think provides all the information you really need. So it's fairly clear, very simple, and you can change the view on it for just as you like it. That's fine, I quite like that. I also like this rocker switch there for your driving mode select button. 
Volkswagen has totally copied that from the BMW i3. One slight problem with it on this car though is that the rim of the steering wheel blocks the actual rocker switch. So until you've learned which way is which, you have to lean across like that to see. Oh, yeah, it's forward for drive and it's towards you like that for reverse and I'll press it in or just jiggle it a bit to get neutral. There, perfect. Hmm. Now, one of the things about this car is that it has voice command, so you should be able to control most things just by saying things to the car. Hello, ID. What can I do for you? Set temperature to 21 degrees. I've got what is effectively the Volkswagen kaleidoscope of doom. Look, it's just buffering. I'll just freeze to death while you try and figure it out. This voice command system in the IDs is very, very glitchy. They haven't sorted it out yet, so I wouldn't bother with it. The rest of the infotainment system is fairly decent, so it's got all the functions you need. It's easy to navigate. It's not the smoothest or the quickest system on the market, but it's okay. You've got inbuilt navigation, but you're not really going to use that. Instead, you're just going to hook up your phone and use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. And to tell you the truth, overall, I think that the infotainment system in the new Mercedes EQA is better than this system in the ID4. And if you want to see my full in-depth video review of the Mercedes, just click on the pop-up and just put a link popping out in the top right-hand corner of the screen. Click on that watch the review of that car. Let's move on to something that this car is a little bit better at and that's cubby spaces. Here, let's remove the keys, is a centre console which you can use cup holders. But if you don't want to use it for cup holdery, you can actually remove it. Look, you can, oh, you can remove it. And then you've got this big cubby area there. There's also some more storage underneath here and you can actually move these little dividers around just so you can have them exactly as you want. And then there's some USB charging ports there, another little tray there, and that has wireless charging on it. Also check this out, right? Door bins, decent size, and the base is lined with felt to stop things rattling around like your keys when you've got them in there. I also like this feature. Yes, we have individual armrests. And the driving position is really good. And there's plenty of adjustment as well. Volkswagen does decent driving positions with lots of adjustments. So it doesn't really matter whether you're big or small. You will be able to find a position that you're happy with in this car. What you may not be so happy with, though, is the quality of some of the materials or lack thereof. So while you've got squidgy and squidgy here, some of the other bits and pieces around the cabin are just a little bit cheap and nasty feeling which isn't becoming of a car this expensive. Hmm. Anyway, let's forget about that for now and go check out the back seats. Right. There will be no complaints here apart from, okay, yeah, look, scratchy plastics here in the back. That's a complaint. But I think that's all I'm gonna moan about because look, loads of knee room, loads of headroom. Also, if you need to carry three people at once, it's really good that this car has a flat floor because you've got batteries underneath here rather than an exhaust system and a prop shaft for sending power to the rear wheel. So look, if you're in the middle seat, there's plenty of room for your feet, headroom's still good here, it's quite a wide car. It's very, very impressive actually for carrying people in the back. Like you've got armrest here, but they've gone and done that annoying thing where the cup holders aren't covered, so you end up putting your elbow in it, which is annoying. It's less annoying is this, look, rear windows. You go all the way down, which is good on a hot day if you want to lean out. In terms of other areas of practicality, the door bin's fairly large back there, so look, they can take this big bottle. See, that's good. You've also got some USB charging ports there, and look, a couple of pockets on the seat backs. Oh, and there's your eyes to fix hunger points if you want to fit a baby seat in here. And there's plenty of room to fit even one of those rear-facing, bulky baby seats. And I like the fact that the covers for the Isofix anchor points, they just flip down like that, so you're not going to lose them. So once you're done with them, you can quite easily snap them back up like that. So pretty decent, this car's in the back. Let's go check out the boot. So even though this particular model I have here is the first edition, which is supposedly well specified, it doesn't have an electric tailgate and the actual handle to open the boot is down here, so it does get covered in road grime and that will end up on your fingers. Now I don't mind not having an electric tailgate because look, you can shut a boot really quickly and open it quickly. And who can't open a boot really? I mean, come on. Anyhow, the boot capacity 
is pretty blooming big actually. 543 litres of space. Not quite as big as a normal petrol powered Volkswagen Tiguan. That has 615 litres of space. And if you click on the pop out banner that I'll put in the top right hand corner of the screen, it should be popping out now. Click on that, you can watch my in depth video review of the Tiguan. Moving on to this car though, it's a bit of a load lip to lift stuff over. Oh. It's not too bad and because it's quite high this boot, because it's a tall car, you're not having to like bend down and then lift stuff over. Now in terms of the practicality underneath here, look you have a little area for storing your charging cables, you've got your 12 volt socket here, some random thing to tie something with there. You've got a ski hatch, look, so, oh come on, a ski hatch, you can fold down the rear seats nice and easy like that, look, there we go. Ah, there, look, and you've got this big, huge space. But I know what you're thinking, look at that there. Big ridge, so it's going to be hard to slide things to the front. Like that. Oh dear, it's stuck, I can't possibly do that now. Now, if you look here, you can see this ridge here, and you can see that this car is available with a false floor, but this one doesn't have it. Which, once again, is surprising when it's the first edition model, it's supposed to be well specified. You can get it with a false floor, and this is what it looks like. Surprised. It's not standard though, especially at this price. That brings me on to five annoying things about the ID4. Instead of the normal way of having four electric window switches for each window, you only have two. And if you want to control the rears, you have to press this touch sensitive button to toggle to operate the rear windows. And then press it again to toggle to operate the fronts. What a rubbish idea. As this is an electric car, there's no engine under the bonnet, so obviously Volkswagen has made full use of that space and created a really nice big front boot. Oh dear, not so much. There are a few areas where I can store my car wow sticks of truth. Look, I can just put that one under here like that, that's good. This guy can probably go in here somewhere. Can he go in there? Yes, that's all right in there. That one I can sort of lay there and maybe this one will fit somewhere down there. Perfect. I'll take it all back. It's not bad at all. Mm. In the good old days, Volkswagen used to hide the reversing camera behind the rear VW badge. And when you put the car in reverse, that badge would pop up and the camera would then poke out. And then when you went forwards, it would close down and it would always keep it clean because it was covered. However, they've now moved the reversing camera down here, where it's really low and close to the road, so it gets covered in road grime. It does have a little washer jet for it, but it's still not as good as just keeping the camera completely hidden like before. I often slag off Peugeots and Citroëns for having such small glove boxes, because they can't be bothered to relocate the fuse box from here when they move the steering wheel over to the right. Now, you wouldn't normally have that on a Volkswagen, they'd bother to do that, but look, not anymore. Look how small that glove box is. They've clearly left the fuse box in there. It's like they're penny pinching and cost saving. I mean, what is going on? This is not very Volkswagen. This car may not only look a bit bloated, but it is actually physically bloated. It weighs in at over 2.1 tonnes, which is really quite a lot. And weight affects a car's efficiency, its handling, and also its comfort levels, because you have to fit it with stiffer suspension to cope with that extra weight. Hmm. It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. The stitching on the back of the seat may look like a design feature, but it's actually functional. Look, this is a little pocket, perfect for your mobile phone. Look at that. And then you can just sit back and look at someone's Instagram. So this is my Instagram, Matt Watson Cars. Put a link in the pinned comment. Follow me there, please. Lots of behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, good idea though, that. The door handles don't operate like normal door handles. In there is actually a switch and you just pull on it. Ah, and the door opens. So you're not having to have a jolly good tug, but you might want to have a tug if for some reason your battery's flat and none of this works, because you can still get in. Look, if you put some pressure on it, look. You can see, it still operates like a door handle and there's even a little key there so you can unlock it manually if you have to. This car has something called an ID light and it's an LED strip that runs the length of the dashboard by the windscreen and it interacts with you to alert you of certain things. For instance, if someone calls you on your mobile phone, it'll start flashing. If the emergency brake system realizes that you need to brake, it'll flash at you to get you to brake. Also, when you're using things like the climate control, it flashes up to just so that you've activated it. And when you're on your satellite navigation, it will indicate to show that you're needing to leave a junction soon. 
This car has drum brakes at the back, which according to Volkswagen is a good thing. You see, electric cars hardly ever use their rear brakes because they do a lot of regen braking and so their back brake discs get all rusty, looks terrible and eventually they might need replacing. So Volkswagen decides to just fit drum brakes instead and then they don't have to be serviced at all, they will last the life of the car. I hope it's true and I've not just been repeating some PR spin. Check it out, look, Isofix anchor points on the front passenger seat, which is handy if you want to carry a child seat here in the front as well. Keep your eye on the baby while you're driving. Now let's talk about the motor. So at the moment, there's only one version of ID4 available. It has a rear mounted 204 horsepower electric motor. There will be a four wheel drive version, which has another motor at the front and combined it'll have 306 horsepower. There'll also be a lower power rear drive version with around 148 horsepower. This car comes with a usable battery pack of 77 kilowatt hours. Now to charge it, if you use a three pin socket like this, it can take you over 30 hours. If you have a 7.5 kilowatt wall box at home, that'll take 11 hours. If you have the upgraded 11 kilowatt hour wall box with phase free charging, that'll take eight hours. This car can actually charge at 125 kilowatts. And if you can find one of those chargers, it can go from empty to 80% full in just 40 minutes. Now the range of this car with a full battery, according to Volkswagen at least, 310 miles, though I think that's quite optimistic. Now, if you want to keep up to date with all the latest on the ID4 and the different battery sizes and the different motors, as VW releases them, what I've done is put a link up there in the top right-hand corner of the screen. You click on that, you can actually configure an ID4 and then it'll give you the full range of choices that are currently available to buy this car with. So then, what's the ID4 like for driving in town? Being an SUV, you're raised up so you get a decent view forwards. However, this pillar does create quite a blind spot and the back window is quite small as well, which is a bit annoying when you're maneuvering. You do have front and rear parking cameras which help out, but it'd be better if overall visibility was just a bit better. This car, being heavy, does have relatively firm suspension. It's not terrible, but you do feel the bumps a little bit more than you might expect in a car such as this. However, the faster you go, the more it irons out the surfaces in the road. What is good though, is the steering. It's nice and light. And of course, because there's no gearbox or engine, you can just drive it along on the throttle alone. Also, when you're driving around town, the brakes are pretty good. Sometimes in electric cars, they can be a bit jerky, but these aren't bad at all. And I can flick the switch here to put it into more aggressive regen. So when I lift off, it will slow the car more steadily. However, it's not quite as abrupt a slowdown as you can get in something like a Nissan Leaf where you can pretty much drive it along on one pedal alone. Also, as you'll probably notice, I've lifted off the accelerator for quite a while. The car still is coasting. It will not go to complete standstill. It will just keep on moving forward like an old fashioned automatic car when really it's better to be able to actually stop the car just by lifting off. I wish it would do that. I can't fault the turning circle though it's very good on this car. So it is just 10 meters, which is pretty similar to something like a Volkswagen Up. And I'm gonna try and show you just how good the turning circle is now. I can pretty much do a UE in this track to check it safe. Look at this. I mean, that is nuts. To be able to do that really is quite impressive and I didn't drop off the track at all then <laughs> and then when you need to go faster you got really good pickup from the electric motor that's the great thing about electric motors instant power so I'm doing 50 floor it it's how long it takes to get to 70 not bad at all and actually when you go at speed this is quite a relaxing car the seats are comfortable you do get a bit of noise from the wind and a very little bit of noise from the tyres, but you're only really hearing those because there's no droning sound from an internal combustion engine, so your ears just pick up on those bits more. Really, it is quite a relaxing car to travel in. And in terms of doing distance, what is the range? Well, this car is averaging 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour of battery used. It's got a 77 kilowatt hour battery, so that works out to quick math maths, come on work to 260 miles of real world range, which is, it's only about 70% really of what Volkswagen says it should do. Hmm. Not brilliant then, but livable.
as for driving this thing on a twisty road, well, because it's heavy, it's no sports car. But because all the weight is low down, it doesn't lean that much in the bends, and you've got a perfect 50-50 weight distribution. So it's very neutral and balanced and easy to drive. And even if you do something silly, like suddenly have to turn the wheel quickly or lift off the accelerator because you think you need to slow down, it doesn't do anything untoward, like step out of line. It's quite safe, secure, fun. Absolutely not, no way, shape or form, but it is fairly decent to drive. If you want an electric car that is fun, you're probably better off with something like a Tesla Model 3. And if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can watch my full in-depth video review of that car. Now, speaking of fun, let's see what this car is like when it comes to launching. Put it into sports mode. So I get maximum acceleration. I'm gonna floor it, see what we do. We time it on my specialist timing gear. Let's do this. Come on, what do you do? Volkswagen says, just over eight seconds. What's the reality? There's a 60. Oh, not 60, 7.49 seconds. I'll take that. So then what's my final verdict on the new Volkswagen ID4? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the ID4. It really is a good all round, family friendly, practical electric SUV. And therefore a genuine cock chafer. <laughs> Hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. Click on those windows there. You can watch some more videos. And if you click on that box there, you can get a car, I'd say how much money you can save on a new car.